measure derived? Measure is derived on the laws, on the practice, on what's actually happened, what the statutes are. They're measured on what's actually been in the media that year. And actions, safety, of journalists. safety of journalists, actions taken against journalists. Is a low score a good score? No, a low score is a, a low score means that um, they are fed higher up on the positive class. Yeah, basically what it means is that, say, in Oman, if you're a blogger and you write a blog saying rude things about Majesty Sultan Qaboos, um, either you'll be in jail or you'll be hiding in Bahrain. Okay, KSA Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 157. They've gone up, they've improved. But now these are the kind of countries where you never say rude things about the rulers, unless they want you to. And this is one of the points that the CD doesn't actually quite <coughs> address. Um, but we're going into countries like this, Western universities, Western style, Western ideas, and these are countries which are not, in many respects, regarded as being terribly free or terribly open, or which reward initiative unless the leadership at the top, as it has in the Emirates in some cases, with people like Sheikh Sayed or Mohammed bin Rashid, actually dragged people by the scruff of the neck and said, come on, let's go. Where people, frankly, are too scared to think for themselves. What's happening is that we're actually breeding a very discontented generation of students. And I actually happen to think that's a good thing. Journalism and the media should make you discontent and make you think and want to do things. But it does mean that we're probably going to see a situation where the students who are being taught are going to keep asking these questions and there aren't actually any real answers for them. This is the thing. Okay? Yeah, you need to learn English if you want to fully engage in globalization or empire, as we used to call it. Okay? And yes, it's going to do really interesting things to your culture. And you won't like what it does to your culture when you sit back and think about it. <coughs> okay, but you probably don't have a choice now. And Western institutions will keep going in there and trying to make money. And some of them are going to fall flat on their face, as AUT did, although I don't think it was their fault at all. But the other thing that we need to consider with this, and this is sort of what I think is the other general trend of this, is we need to sit back and consider, and I'm going to be trying to look at this in broader terms later on, is that there's a whole philosophy of Western intervention in the education system, Western intervention in modern industries like the media, and a whole lot of questions that we still need to focus on and address about the long-term effects of this. Now, as I said, you know, the AUT program, that's gone, I'm gone, I'd love to go back and visit. But the questions about what will happen next in Oman are still unresolved. And the questions about what happens in the future, whether institutions in Australia and New Zealand are going to be able to hold off the thought that there's, you know, what's, what's the figure? It's going to be 11.3 million students from kindergarten to university by 2020. So, you know, are they going to be able to hold off and resist plunging into that? Or are they going to hopefully take some lessons from the AUT experience and go in a bit more carefully, or hopefully a lot more carefully into that? As I said at the beginning, there's about three or four narratives in this they're very large. I've just touched on a few of them, but I hope that it's at least illuminated some of the areas and opened up perhaps some ways for us to think about some of the very broad issues that are contained here. Okay, thank you. But so what, what was the financial advantage for, I mean, there was always rumours, but for AUT and actually doing it? Well, AUT was part of um, a consortium, um, I guess they, the, the original deal was apparently, as I understand, was that AUT went into it with some 
contacts initially and was orig originally going to do everything and then the government said, oh no, no, you must share this. Yeah. Um, I know VU did the language. Now I've been told but haven't been able to find, find this out for sure. I've been told by people who taught the VU English language course to the students in readiness that after about a year, they just chucked it. Didn't make any fuss about it, they just chucked it and went back to using what they'd used before because it was pitched at too high a level. Okay, and remember, you know, the colleges of applied science, we're not talking Muscat and the big city. You know, we're, we're talking goats in your street here. You know, where we're talking desert and camels and, and, and mountain men and fishermen's sons here. You know, we aren't talking people from the big city. Um, and and that's, that's the other thing, was that, you know, they, they had no problem with the journalism and communications course at Sultan Qaboos University in Muscat. Now you take that and you're dealing with kids basically living in the bush. Um, and, and you just multiply your, your problems because these kids are, they're not coming from an environment that's been exposed to the media. You know, the com media happened in Oman in 1970. You know, we can trace it. 1970, Sultan Caboose makes a broadcast saying, I have taken over, I am in charge. Okay? Five years later, the civil war is over, and we have television. In the meantime, we've had radio, we've had newspapers. It's like, you know, Oman itself in mainland Oman, you know, I had kids who went home and talked to them. I could say to them, go and ask your father if he remembers when he got his first radio. You know, that, that's a level of what we're talking about, you know. And I had kids coming back from their, their mountain village and saying, yeah, and my dad remembers when the imam said, don't listen to the radio because it's actually a devil box <laughs> with gin inside. <laughs> Okay, I mean, this is the level we're talking about. Yes, Joyce. Well, there seems to have been an extra tune on a, on a gigantic scale. It's somewhere. It's not, you're saying it's not AMT, it's not the lecture and staff who had to agree to develop the work. There's been a gigantic blunder of, of cultural appropriateness mm. of that. So where, where does that lie? Um, okay. <laughs> the Omanis are very good at giving you an impression that something is wanted or something is going to happen. So they nod when they mean no. That comes with a payment. Or they say, You know, yes. you're willing to just believe no. whatever you Do want. Do you want money, this? Right? Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Or it's quite possible that the minister wanted this, the director wanted that, the deputy director wanted this, and if you've got people from three or four different tribes, all jockeying for position, that's going to come into it. So it's intercultural miscommunication. No, but it could be, well, yeah, but see, you, you, you could be intercultural miscommunication built on tribal rivalries within the ministry and the fact that the minister's a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you get the poor bunnies out in the field, well, they just get told. And, you know, if you're in the field and you're saying, excuse me, this is wrong, we should fix it, it's like, blah, 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 go away. Because you're just down there, you know nothing. I, the dean, am all wise and will tell you what to do. But you give away. Actually, this is interesting because before I came to this presentation and hearing about the AUT and not only AUTs, uh, you know, work in, uh, uh, you know, other countries, but other universities, Western university think, what do we think going to this place and causing our education? But, you know, what you're saying here is a two-sided two story that uh, they are invited on an assumption that they have to produce a program. My question is, they must have had something in their minds. What do they want to achieve? You know, you can't just invite uh, somebody from ah. the other side of the world coming right. and do things. Okay. The ministry, I mean, Let me read to you. Have a policy, a national policy. Let me read to you a quote from, this is the website for the Ministry of Manpower. <laughs> yes, we have persons in Oman. <laughs> Goodness me. Okay. This is a quote from the Ministry of Manpower website. Now, the Ministry of Manpower runs the Colleges of Technology. Now, think about this. 
College of Applied Science, Universities, Ministry of Higher Ed. Colleges of Technology, Ministry of Manpower. Okay, so this is a quote. The Oman government, with His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Syed, has a broader ambition of promoting the Sultanate among the top developed countries in the world. Mm -hmm. Strategic planning as well as mega projects have been carefully implemented to enable the country to enter to the third millennium and establish a strong society and sustaining economy. Special attention is focused on strengthening the educational qualification and competency of the citizens with opportunities to participate in the economic and social development towards nation building process. This can be achieved by educating youth of Oman. His Majesty envisioned for a productive labour workforce, particularly on the scientific, technical, etc., 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 etc. Oman has five year plans. It has giant pictures of Majesty Sultan Caboose everywhere. Okay, go to the Gulf. You know, we're basically talking Soviet methods here. Five year plans and big pictures of our beloved leader. And education is part of the development process. Okay? They want... See, the Omanis are different from the Emiratis. Okay? The Omanis actually work for a living. Okay? They work in shops. They cut hair. They sweep roads. They drive taxis. They work, unlike proverbially the Emiratis. And they're very proud of that. And they're very proud of having had a huge trading empire that went as far south as Zanzibar and across the Baluchistan in Pakistan. And they lost all that. Okay? But they have, a, they have a tremendous amount of pride in their culture and their heritage and what they were. And they want to get that back. And they went through two civil wars between 1950 and 1975. Okay? Where I worked was the centre, one of them. You know, it was a village within sight that had been totally flattened by the RAF on behalf of Sultan Qaboos' daddy back in 59. So, education is part of progress, development, getting them into the point where they can get rid of the expatriates. Getting them into the private sector, getting them into the government sector. So, it's very much part of the drive to stand on their own feet. Oman doesn't have much oil, it's got a bit of gas, it's got other resources, but compared to the other Gulf states, it's pretty poor. Okay, and, and, and you know, the other, the other Gulf states, well, they laugh at Omanis. They think they're stupid. So the backward. way to get rid of the experts is learn what the experts yeah. do. And yeah, you know, I'm just going to say that the, that the students who are going to be the graduates that you were teaching are part of the educated workforce, the indigenous workforce then, that will be able to surely edu carry on the practices, but within a more appropriate cultural context. There's a report written by one of the lecturers at Sultan Qaboos University, which has journalism and media, some years ago. And their experiences then mirror ours, potentially. Which is that the media is so tightly controlled that you know you learn all this Western stuff, you go into it, and nothing happens. You can't do it. The, the, the English language media in Oman, all the English language newspapers are run by Indians. Okay, and they will not hire Omanis because Omanis will want, you know, ten thousand dollars a month. Okay, um, whereas you know. The Oman Daily News, I'm sorry, but you know, they can get their cousin from Hyderabad for about one real a month. Yeah. Um, so the Omanis aren't actually ever going to get involved in the English language media anyway, unless it's something like Radio Oman Internet. All going to be Arabic media, and that's really controlled, and that's really a lot of it. Like TV pretty much is, you know, that, that's Belushi territory. Okay? other parts of the media belong to certain tribes. So there's not going to be a lot of that crossover. I mean, I talked with the kids. I said to them, you know, with, with all the freeware that's out there, like, like Audacity and things like that, you know, you can set up Radio Niswa, you could set up Niswa TV, you can do it all on your own. And they just went, mm, yeah, but so the last person who did that is still in jail. <laughs> so